Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me again. Remember I told you it's the Chanel Love Weekend. Yesterday I did my Chanel Unicorn video. I loved reading your comments, by the way. Thank you so much to everyone who watched yesterday's video. Today we're going to talk about the new leaked preview pics from Chanel for 22C and 22P. You know, Chanel loves to leak you know, their like collections. They love it. You guys love it. I posted a community post and you guys were like, yeah, let them leak. I'm like, people at Chanel should be fired for these leaks, but no one seems to agree with me. So we're going to go through it. And then at the end, I want to ask you guys something that I posted on my Instagram and it got a lot of you talking. I'm very curious to know what you guys here on YouTube think as well. So make sure you keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit notifications. Hitting notifications supports me so much. Please make sure that you hit notifications. Let's get straight into the video. We're going to start with 22C, which is the cruise collection. So that's coming out in December. I'm sorry, I have to look at the monitor because the bags are on the screen there. I hope that's okay. I'm not using my red phone today. <laughs> Tell me what you think. So the first bags I want to talk about are, of course, my favorite bags, the Trendy CC. The Trendy CC is a seasonal piece. She comes in and out of Chanel's life. She's like, hey, I'm here, guys. And then she's like, bye, I'm gone now. She's back. It comes in two finishes. This color here looks like a kind of pale pink, the sort of larger Trendy that you should see on the screen now. And then the smaller one is black. To me, the um, hardware looks like rose gold. A few people on Facebook have said it does really look like rose gold. I'm very curious to know what you guys think. Do you think that rose gold hardware will work on the Trendy? Make sure you let me know. Okay, you guys, we need to talk about the lunch box bags. These ones look like they're back. These kind of remind me of these, I don't know, they look very Lego-ish to me. I don't know why. They come in this kind of cafe au lait color. There are three of them. I feel like these ones are going to sell and do very well. Um, I'm hesitant to call them unicorns because I don't know if everyone is going to want them, but I do think that they're very spe they're very special pieces that will have their target. Those like Chanel lunchbox bags, they were super hot for a period of time. These ones look like they've kind of updated that style for cruise. I mean, what do you think? These are the only really cruisy looking bags in this collection, in my opinion. Um, when I think of cruise, you know, I think of obviously cruise looking bags, like things for, you know, warmer climates, you know, I'm going to be on the yacht, okay, I'm going to be on the speed boat, and I would go with something like this. I feel like these are a little bit more cruisy. I, I don't know if I'm a fan of these bags, but I know they're going to sell. So, you know, when you know that Chanel's, like, bags are going to sell and be very successful, I think this is one of them for sure. What's with these creepy hobo bags? These are so weird and creepy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but these look cheap to me. I don't know why they look so cheap to me. And I just, I don't know. I saw these and I was like, please, like, and I know these are going to be thousands and thousands of pounds, dollars, shillings, euros. They're going to cost so much money. And I just have no idea who is buying these. Make sure that you tell me if you're interested in these because I just think that they look super weird. I don't think they look fashionable. I don't think I don't think they look stylish. I don't know what Virginie was thinking, but I'm not here for this at all. In 22C, we're seeing the return of bigger tote bags and drawstring bags that are like pouches, basically. They're actually bags, but they, they have this like drawstring effect. I was really interested in this trend um, when I was looking through the collection originally because I was like, wow, we're actually seeing this return. I think maybe if you also think of all the stuff that's going on in the world, Chanel are making a bet that people need to carry more things and women need to carry more things because they're gonna be moving around a lot more. I'm not a massive fan of the drawstring looking bags. I think they look a bit cheap. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't think like, I don't feel like they look interesting. I know that these totes are gonna to do well. So far, 22C is not that interesting to me, which is sad because I feel like 21K was just super interesting. There were so many superstar bags in that collection. Whereas here, everything feels a little bit run of the mill. This collection is coming out in December. So I'm not really sure what Chanel is playing at in terms of these bags, because obviously December is Christmas time, the holidays. I, I felt like they were gonna have these beautiful, very vibrant um, bags, or at least bags that feel a little bit festive. Nothing here so far is kind of, you know, grabbing my attention. I don't, I don't see any, super super amazing bags yet um but yeah i'd love to know what you guys think about this this whole drawstring trend and these larger totes do you think that these ones are going to sell and do you think that people will want to buy them 
Come on, you guys. Yesterday we talked about unicorns. Of course, there's some unicorns. You know, Chanel always hides their unicorns in each collection. So let's start off with this first unicorn. This one kind of reminds me of that holographic um, wok that came a few collections ago. I believe this bag is also a wok and it has a metallic finish. There's also this other bag, which seems like more of like a smaller, maybe even a mini flap. This one also has like a metallic look to it. This is, these two are unicorns, absolutely. These are going to sell out. Particularly this one here, that's like the flat bag with the metallic sheen. That one is going to sell. It has a kind of pinky kind of tone to it. That is the one that I feel like will do quite well for Christmas. You know, obviously, you know, people are buying gifts for themselves, but people, people are buying Chanel presents for other people. I feel like these two are the unicorns of 22C and I absolutely think they'll do very well. Um, we talked about metallics in the comments a bit yesterday. I personally don't really like metallics personally, but I know many people do like metallics and I feel like for winter metallics, you know, do feel quite exciting and they go with the whole theme of autumn winter. These are absolutely the unicorns of the collection. If you think that they're unicorns that I've missed out on, make sure that you let me know as well. TTC has seen the return of some interesting looking Dovilles. I can see there's like a white one there and a black one just looking at the monitor there. Um, the Dovil bag to me is interesting. I, I go through phases with this bag. Sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't really like care for the Dovil anymore. And then sometimes I'm like, the Dovil is so great. Um, I think the black one will do very well. That one looks much smaller than the um, lighter looking one. So the Dovils are back. What do you guys think about having the Dovils for cruise? I mean, do, do, do the Dovils feel like a very cruise option for Chanel? I mean, it doesn't feel very, very cruisy to me, but I know that these bags are very popular for sure. Before we start talking about 22P, I want to show you this final bag from Cruise um, from Cruise 22, and it's this Chanel 19. The picture quality is not fantastic. I believe this looks like a tweedy kind of fabric to me. I think this one will do very well, obviously, for winter. This is like, you know, a great bag for that time of year. Um, just in general to me, the so far with this preview, I feel like 22C, it's okay. We do know that Chanel tends to do this. They'll leak photos that don't look fantastic. They don't leak like high quality pictures in the beginning. They like to see how people feel and react. And then like closer to the launch, we'll see other bags that were never leaked. This, ha this has happened a lot with a lot of collections and there will be other bags that are available um, that haven't been leaked yet and that look much more interesting. So of course, <laughs> when the release day in December rolls around, I will absolutely cover the, this again. So far, I'm not really interested. I think the unicorns look kind of good, but um, of course I'm happy for 22C, only for the fact that the Trendy is back. The Trendy is my favorite bag from the house. I absolutely love it. I think it looks, that to me looks like rose gold hardware. I was actually speaking to someone in a Facebook group um, and I was like, oh my God, guys, is this rose gold hardware? And someone was like, that looks like a Trendy to me with rose gold hardware. If so, I do believe the people who like the Trendy will absolutely buy that bag. Now let's talk about 22P. Okay, you guys, let's talk about 22P. 22P is way more exciting to me. Um, I'll explain the meaning of 22P in the, like, below down here if you don't know what the P means. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. First of all, let's just start with the unicorn of the collection. The unicorn of this collection, without a shadow of a doubt, is this backpack. Now, Chanel has got a very interesting history with backpacks. Um, their backpacks are always in demand. These things sell out very quickly. I am absolutely convinced that this one in particular is going to sell. Like, it's going to fly off the shelves. It's absolutely beautiful. It's not clear whether it comes in lambskin or caviar. I feel like this will be caviar. It's just my personal opinion. There's no shadow of a doubt that this is the unicorn of the collection. Chanel does not make backpacks often, and they don't make these really trendy, um, hot, you know, glamorous looking ones like this one as as often as we'd like. I feel like there was a time when Carl was around, they did have those really cool unicorny backpacks often, but not as much. It's back now for 22P, this thing is going to sell. I believe this collection is available from the end of January for those of you who are interested. And there are people on Facebook saying that if you have a good relationship with your SA, you can start reserving 22C and 22P. The next bags I would love to talk about from 22P that um, are not necessarily unicorns, but I think they're going to be super hotly contested because of their colors are these bags right here. These colors are very, very hot. This, this one is like, a, if I'm looking there on the monitor, one of them is kind of like a peachy color. It's like peach, 
very beautiful and then there's this beautiful like fuchsia pink and then there's this yellow flap i think they're just i don't know i just feel like those those are the types of colors that i think of when i think of spring i think of colors like peach coral pink yellow super super vibrant those ones are going to sell for those of you who love to buy chanel when it comes to bright colors i feel like chanel does bright colors beautifully and i think um these ones are actually going to do well so while they're not necessarily unicorns they're going to sell and this collection feels more commercial the cruise collection feels a little bit more pulled back and a bit stripped back this one feels very vibrant and commercial Another really hot bag from 22P, in my opinion, is this purple mini. I think this one is also going to go, and I think this is going to be one of the most popular bags in the collection. I don't necessarily feel like it's a unicorn again, but I think it's just one of those bags that people are going to gravitate to. This purple seems um, much darker than the lilac purple tones that we saw in 21K. This one seems a little bit darker. Um, I also love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. There are also these um, two very strange looking bags. One is black, one is red. They kind of look kind of briefcasey. I, I'm wondering how big these will be. These are obviously seasonal. I have never seen this style before. If you've seen this style, style before, please can you put list the year and the collection that you saw it in. I've never seen this like format ever from Chanel. I'm very curious to see if these will actually be successful. And I'm very curious to know, can you fit your laptop in them? They look kind of briefcasey. There's something about them that's quite kind of interesting, but weird at the same time. I believe that Chanel refers to this bag as the shopping bag, and it's back. This is another one of Chanel's seasonal pieces. Um, I love this bag. It doesn't come around often. Sometimes I've noticed with this particular bag, they will skip um, seasons. Sometimes it's there one season, you don't see it another season. Chanel has many bags it calls the shopping bag, I know, because I was on the website today and there are lots of hideous looking ones. This one is one of my personal favorites. You guys, you know how I feel about blue. I'm not a big fan of the color. I don't really care for blue, to be honest. However, I do um, like lighter blues, those kind of pastel blues, sky blues. Those are more my vibe, baby blue. That's more my thing. This is right up my alley. I actually love this bag and I don't know why I love this bag. One of my friends was like, you like this bag because it reminds you of the trendy, which is funny because when after she said that, I kind of did see the trendy vibes in this. So this is meant to be like a kind of like a shopping tote. This is one of my favorite seasonal pieces from Chanel. I'm glad to see that it's back. I wish it was in like a color. My favorite color is pink, by the way. Um, I wish it was in like a pink, but I think this is also really nice. For those of you who love the cocoa handle, the cocoa handle in 22P is looking very crisp, very fresh. There's an iridescent one. There's a purple one. I can also see there's this kind of a pink one as well. I'm just looking there on the monitor. Um, the cocoa handle is back. Um, again, the cocoa handle is one of those bags that I'm really shocked that it's as popular as it is. It's just not one of my personal favorites, but I do think this iridescent one is going to sell extremely well. I also am looking at the flap with the top handle. On this picture, it looks like white, but allegedly this one is going to be like, it has like a multicolored colorway. So it's kind of multicolored, but from a lighter palette. Another really hot bag is this pink um, flap. This one looks like it's also iridescent. I think this one is going to sell and be very successful. This one gives me summery vibes. It's very fresh. Those iridescent um, bags from Chanel are very popular at the moment. I think they also do very well at resale. I've seen a lot of them on Fashion File and they have huge premiums and markups. So obviously, Fashion file feel like they can resell them for quite a bit. I'm very curious to know what you guys think about this. This one looks kind of iridescent but it has a kind of pearl sheen to it judging from this photo again the photo isn't great so once like proper high quality pictures of the bags leak then we'll be able to tell in more detail blue is a massive theme in 22p you should see three bags here the business affinity the flap with the top handle and of course the cocoa handle those of you who love blue i feel like the flap with the top handle is the cutest looking one here I do not like the business affinity, okay? The business affinity is like, again, guess what? I'm never going to be cancelled. And I'm like, you need to be cancelled. You need to go away. But I know this bag is super popular. I feel like, again, this shade of blue to me is just much more digestible. It feels very summery. It feels very fresh. It looks kind of like a very 
fresh light sky blue i absolutely love this color another really cute bag from 22p is this chanel um purple tweed piece it's interesting because it does look kind of tweedy to me or at least more of like a fabric kind of bag um which wouldn't be my first option for obviously spring summer but i think this is also very very cute and i'm pretty sure that this one will also go the 19s always look good however now i have bad news okay what is Virginie doing with this boy bag here? When I first saw this, I was like, this has to be a joke. Like, the boy bag with the top handle? No, guys, I don't know. I, I don't know, you guys. Like, I don't know what I don't know what Virginie's thinking, but I really don't like this. I think that this does not look cute. I don't know what she was thinking. Do you guys, what do you guys think of this? Because I think this looks absolutely terrible. I thought someone had photoshopped. <laughs> this into the pics um, for 22p. I absolutely hate this. I think it looks just really bad. And I feel like it makes the boy bag look really cheap. The boy bag is going through phases. A lot of people feel like the boy bag maybe may, may even get discontinued one day. Who knows? I think the boy bag will be around for some time because it's part of the romance of the house. Arthur Edward, blah, blah, blah. But I really just don't like this. Like, why would you put a top handle like some of you have you know put some very critical comments about Virginie and one of the biggest critiques about Virginie from a lot of people who are Chanel shoppers is that like she doesn't really try anything new it's like hey there's a flat bag let's put a top handle on it on the flap it looks good but on this it just looks I don't know it looks kind of tacky and cheap and naff I just don't like it at all those of you who love the reissue there's this very cute pink coral reissue i think this is one of the cutest reissues i've seen for some time not a huge fan of the style but it doesn't really matter i'm thinking about you guys um for those of you who really like the reissue you don't want to see double c's everywhere you don't really care about logos i think this is so cute and this is a beautiful kind of palette cleanser to that ridiculous boy bag with a top handle go get out of here with that because that just looks so ridiculous like the boy bag looks very sleek in general and they put a top handle on it girl please okay this reissue is very cute i'm really glad to see these like coral pinks and these like coral tones back for spring summer for next year i think it's absolutely amazing so those ones are basically my picks um from cruise um and spring summer this is just a preview of course once we get closer to those um months i will absolutely cover this collection again and in more detail um, I just want to kind of wrap up my views on each collection. I really think 22C is just kind of a bit of a, I don't know, it's kind of like a piano that hasn't been tuned. It's not really that exciting or that great. Um, 22P is much better, much more vibrant. The colors are really great. I really think um, the cocoa handles will do super well from that collection from 22P. I think those really beautiful like coral pinks. Um, and that, uh, what's it called, the, the, the pink bag that I really like, that's like a fuchsia pink bag, I think that one will do really well. There are a few bags that will do absolutely well. Of course, the unicorn of the collection, which is the backpack. Spring, summer, tends, the, the, I've noticed like with Chanel, the P collection, print on, um, that one tends to be stronger than S. It's just something that I've noticed. Obviously, we haven't seen 22S yet. I do think that the, the first half of the collection for me tends to be a little bit stronger than s but we don't know how that will play around this time around i think that chanel benefits from leaking um things basically very soon i think that they benefit because it just feeds so much frenzy on facebook and instagram everyone is talking about these bags people are like hey i'm going to be buying this in 21k <laughs> I'm buying this in December, I'm buying this in January. Some of you have told me privately that it helps you to budget um, and plan and decide if you're going to buy anything or if you're not going to buy anything. I think that Chanel has really created a very defined system. They release tons of collections every year. Don't forget, we also have Chanel Coco Beach, which is on their website, their swimwear line, which didn't really make like a massive splash. Let's see what I did there. Okay. And we have Coco Neige, which at some point should be due. I mean, I'm guessing that they will release Coco Neige. That was like one of Carl's things and it's very apres-ski and all that. So I guess the question I have for you guys is, do you think that Chanel is releasing too many collections? What do we think? I've already told you, many of you, um, privately in chats and in emails when I've spoken to you guys, I feel like Chanel, me personally, before Carl passed on, God rest him, 
I think that he was taking the house in the right direction with the collaboration with Pharrell. I know that that collaboration was super controversial. It was very profitable. It was very successful for the brand. I think that was the right direction to go in. I wanted to see Chanel go go, go in just a different direction. Um, it's always going to have its legacy products like the reissue that are always going to sell. But I felt like that was the right direction. I think with Virginie, what we're seeing is she's just sticking to the status quo. I have, I have nothing against that. Okay, She has a job. She needs to create, you know, profitable looks and styles and products that people want to purchase each and every season. And I think with each um, season from Chanel, there is something for everyone at the brand. I think what Virginie does is she plays things very close to her chest and she doesn't really try that many new things when it comes to bags and SLGs. And that's fine, you know, maybe she doesn't want to rock, you know, upset the apple cart as it, as it were. But I just feel like sometimes like we just do see the same bags over and over again, just with different variations. And while the, the top hand, like the flap with the top handle is her design, I mean, it's not really that unique. You can't just be like, hey, there's a boy bag, I'm going to put a top handle on it. Or hey, there's a flap, I'm going to put a top handle on it. But I think I'm going to give Virginie a few more collections. I want to see more of her style. I feel like 21K is where we saw her at her best. I think 21K is her best ever collection that she has ever done vis-a-vis -vis the bags only, just talking about that. And yes, I know Virginie, there are many people in the fashion design team who play a role in designing these bags, but ultimately the final um, decision when Carl was, was alive rested with him and now it rests with her. So I'd love to know what you guys think of these bags. In terms of whether Chanel have a lot of collections or not, I think Chanel, you know, has to have a lot of collections in order to make a lot of money. There's no doubt that you need to constantly um, create product and by creating product that generates interest. And lots of people say they think it's too much on YouTube, but then when I go into Facebook groups, like private Facebook groups that are closed, everyone is super, super excited to see new bags, new styles. People love seeing the new products from Chanel and people are never going to stop wanting to see that. So I think that it's working for them. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. Just keep going and do what works. Okay, you guys, super quickly before I go, I wanted to tell you about something that I, I, I like experienced with you guys like yesterday. I posted on my Instagram about this story here about Dr. Dre. Um, basically, I posted this story. A lot of you actually were like, I guess what I said. <laughs> And a lot of you gave me your opinions. I loved hearing from you. I know some of you don't follow me on Instagram. Please go correct that now. Say hello on Instagram. Say hello on TikTok. Um, and I wanted to kind of open it up more broadly. This doesn't really have anything to do with luxury, but it is connected to wealth. And obviously wealth and luxury go hand in hand. So I wanted us to discuss it super quick. Dr. Dre, obviously you know who he is. Even if you don't like him, I know he's very controversial. Just focus on this part of the story. His eldest daughter says she's living in her car. She's homeless. She has four kids and she's completely broke. She says that he's cut off communication with her and he's cut her off financially. She's 38. I believe Dr. Dre is, um, I believe Dr. Dre is like 54 or something like that. So he had her when she, um, when, she, when he was very young and he has been financially supporting her since she was a child. She's 38 now. He cut off financial support last year in January and basically she's been living in her car. I think she's been driving for Uber Eats and all of that. So I posted a poll like, hey guys, do you think Dre should support her? Because he was being dragged really hard on social media. But there were other people like on Instagram pages who were like, no, she needs to get a job. I was shocked. Like, you guys were like, no, like she needs to go and get herself a job. I want to tell you what I think. I want to hear what you guys think because we talk about very expensive lifestyles on this channel and expensive products. I think that, you know, she's probably thinking, my dad's Dr. Dre, okay? My dad discovered Eminem. My dad made Snoop Dogg the, the huge superstar that he is. My dad was involved with two, some of Tupac's biggest records and I'm living in a car. Listen, okay? And I'm saying this right now, Tupac would never have allowed this to happen if that was like his child. So say what you want, he's my favorite. He's my favorite rap artist of all time. But still, I feel like Dre needs to basically support her. Um, that's his daughter. Fathers are supposed to protect their daughters. She obviously can't budget and she obviously can't manage her money. And not everyone can do adulting. Not everyone can pay bills, okay? <laughs> not everyone can, you know, manage income and finances properly. And just a another story, like, do you guys remember this clip from the Kardashians many seasons ago when Chris was like talking to Kim about Caitlyn? And she was saying, 
how Caitlyn, when they were younger, Caitlyn like has never like paid a bill in her life. I remember that line because I always found it so interesting. She was like telling Kim, like defending herself, like Caitlyn has never paid a bill in her life. And do you think there are a lot of people who are like that, who um, are maybe some people who are wealthy, who have people who take care of everything for them financially or other people who depend on someone else financially. You should never really depend on someone else for your finances and for your living. But I do think at the end of the day, like Dr. Dre, of course, being a very successful African-American record producer, um, he should be there at the end of the day supporting his daughter. Apparently they haven't seen each other in 18 years. She speaks to him through his lawyer and his accountant, his team. She hasn't spoken to him. Um, he doesn't want to speak to her. And apparently he was telling her like, if you go to the media, I will not support you ever again financially. She took that chance. She went to the Daily Mail. She sold her story. I'm sure the Daily Mail gave her some money. My, my, view, my view is this. I know that a lot of this is cultural. You guys are going to be like, yeah, but in America, everyone has to fend for themselves. I get that. And people do fend for themselves here. But here it's like a little bit more collaborative. And of course, there are users in families. We all have our own family dramas. I went through my own drama with someone I know who I who became who felt very entitled to my like business success and who was really harassing me at one point for money and constantly wanted to borrow money from me. And it was a very stressful time. And um, I'm lucky because, you know, my husband is so blunt and very straightforward about things. He's like, again, you're being used, like stop helping this person. I'm like, OK, you know, so uh, there are people who feel entitled to your success. like. If you're on, if you're popping, or if things are going well for you, people feel like you need to support them financially. I do understand that. But I think at the end of the day, we're talking about a father-daughter relationship. Like, that's his daughter. Like, he's got four grandkids in the cold. He needs to support them. And I think what kind of annoyed me a little bit is because I know recently there was some kind of charity thing that... Um, he was doing where there were like scholarships being launched. How can you launch scholarships and your eldest daughter is in the cold? I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care how much money that he's given her. She obviously can't manage it. So maybe the way he was like supporting her was wrong. Maybe what he should do is just like buy her a very modest home. Apparently she's trying to survive in California. I am not even American. Even I know that California's housing situation is crazy. Okay, I know that Dr. Dre's from California as well. California love. Yeah, there I said it. But I just feel like I feel like this situation is crazy. And this, this situation makes him look crazy. Someone on Instagram, I did not say this, okay, so I can't take credit for this comment. Someone on Instagram Instagram said something super interesting. They said, This is Dr. Dre's karma. Okay. <laughs> Someone was like you're paying your ex-wife $300,000 a month, okay? Your ex-wife is going to get her check, okay? Now your daughter knows your ex-wife is getting three hundred dollars a month. Your daughter wants a check. Now, for me, I just got to feel like the daughter probably is entitled, which is wrong. But at the end of the day, you're her father. You are the one who needs to uplift her and set her up and put her in a good situation. Let me be clear. Black parents are tough. When I read this story, I was like, Dr. Dre is a, a tough black parent, okay? Black parents hold you accountable for your actions and black parents don't coddle their kids. Like, I remember when I was young and I'd be like, mom, like, mom, I want to buy Uggs. Remember when Uggs were like the thing, okay? And my mom was like, Uggs. What kind of name is that? I remember that was like her first reaction, like, what kind of name is that? I'm not buying you shoes called Uggs. You want to buy them? You can go get yourself a job, okay? And you can pay for them with your own money. So I feel like, I feel like, you know, maybe he is, you know, it is tough love. I, I feel like this is a bit excessive. He should just support her and help her get on her feet. Um, you know, you created Beast by Dre. You, you're telling me you can't offer your daughter a job? Oh, you, you are one of the most famous record producers in the world. You can't find her a job, okay, at a record company where she can get a check every month? Come on, guys, now. Come on, now. I agree that we all need to support ourselves. I was always like the type of person where even when I was at uni, I had part-time jobs. You know, I could have easily just been, you know, constantly begging my mom, you know, mom, help me, help me. But, you know, I loved actually working and stuff and I liked, you know, studying and also having a part-time job so I could buy gum, so I could buy trainers, so I could look lit, like that was my thing. And I enjoy working, I enjoy grafting, but not everyone likes to work, not everyone likes to pay bills, and a lot of people don't know how to pay bills. If you have a similar situation, um, let me know in the comments. She's not asking for the money to buy 22C and 22P bags, okay? 
She's asking for money from her father for help. He should support her. Charity starts at home. I don't want to hear any talk about any charitable endeavors and your daughter is sitting in her car. Guys, no way. I really hope you enjoyed today's video about NTTC 20TP. I would love to know what you guys think. Um, as always, your different opinions are welcome here. I am not easily um, triggered or upset. Um, as long as you keep it in your Michael Jackson voice, as I always say. Thank you so much to everyone who supports this channel. Please like this video, turn on notifications. I'll see you next week in my next video.